An online shop AR example. AR is the perfect solution for viewing a product in your own home. In this video we'll look at creating your own online shop. To code along with the video open index.html and app.js from the start lecture 7 underscore 3 folder. This lecture was added to the course in February 2021 so if you downloaded the resources before then please download them again. If you use GitHub, then it's time to update your repo. If you can see the folder start lecture 7 underscore 3, then you're good to go. Let's have a look at the index.html page. Make sure to look using a web server. Web server for Chrome is easy to set up, as explained in section 2. The HTML uses Bootstrap, so it scales nicely from desktop to mobile. This isn't a course about HTML markup, so I'm not going to say much about it. What I will point out is the button using the class ar-button. Notice it's set up to call the method showChair in the instance named app. The showChair takes a single integer parameter. If we look in the assets AR shop folder, you'll see six chairs as GLB files. The aim of our code is to use the hit testing technique we used back in section 3 for the walking cartoon night. We'll review it again in this video. Because we have six instances of the AR button, we can't use the 3GS one or the custom one we created earlier. We'll need another approach. If you look at the CS file, csshophomepage.cs, you'll see the CS definition of the AR button. Notice by default it's hidden. The display style property is set to none, which is the 3GS equivalent of setting visible to false. The first thing we need to do is display the button on two conditions. What are those two conditions? Pause the video now and think about it. Yes, Navigator must have an XR property and it must support immersive AR. Notice in the index.html we create an instance of the class app. Time to look in the app.js file. Nothing you haven't seen already. We create the usual scene camera renderer. In the constructor we call setupXR. Notice the to-do. This is where we'll place the code to show the AR buttons. First we check for XR. Then we use the isSessionSupported method checking for immersive AR. Remember this returns a promise, which when it returns as a single return parameter, supported. If this is true then we use get elements by class name to get an HTML collection of elements using the class specified. An HTML collection is not an array, but it's easier to handle arrays and easily converted to an array using the spread operator dot dot dot. Now we have an array we can use for each setting the style display property to block. On a desktop with the WebXR emulator and the AR device selected, you'll now see the AR button. Great! Remember the button when pressed calls show chair. Let's take a look at that now. First we call init AR. More about that in a moment. The function is going to start an AR session and that must be as a result of a user action. So this is the perfect place for it. We show the loading bar we've seen before and then use the GLTF loader class to load the chair using the ID pass to the function. Once loaded we set the GLTF scene as the app property chair. Hide the loading bar and start a render loop. Hopefully fairly familiar stuff at this stage in the course. The main challenge in this example is to initiate an AR session without using the 3GS AR button or my customised version. We're going to do this in the init AR method we met a moment ago. We start by defining a current session variable that's set to null. Since we will have event listener callback functions we'll need a self variable to access the app within the function. We'll need a session init object with required features including hit test. We also need an on-session started callback and an on-session ended callback. Great! Now we can request an immersive AR session passing the session init object. 
Once the request session promise returns, we call on session started. Time to add some code to the function. First up, we need to add an end event, calling on session ended. Then we set the reference space and update the XR object set in the session. We set the current session to keep track of it. The on session ended function needs to remove the added end event from the session. Set current session to null, and if a chair has been loaded, then we need to remove it from the scene and end the rendering loop by setting the animation loop to null. That's all the code you need to enter. The hit testing will look after itself using the same strategy we used in section 3. Notice in Setup XR there are two properties related to hit testing. Hit testing in this context means finding real world geometry using the camera and image tracking to determine where the floor is. It's a feature of both the AR Core library on suitable Android devices and AR Kit on iOS devices. Unfortunately, only Android works with WebXR at the time of recording. The two properties are hit test source requested and hit test source. If we slide down to the render method, you can see if hit test source requested is false, then we call the app method request hit test source which calls the session method request reference space. Once the promise returns, we have a reference space to pass to the request hit source method. And once this returns, we finally can set the hit test source. Since this example requires us to come in and out of immersive AR, we need to add a session end event that resets the app properties for hit testing. So that covers getting the hit test source. The next step is using it. Again, in the render method, if we have a hit test source, then we call the app method get hit test results. This uses the frame passed to the render method as a parameter. If we get any hits back, then we can get the pose as we've seen previously in the course and show the reticle at the position defined by the pose. In the setup XR method, we added a select event handler to the controller. This is triggered when you click the screen and we can see that it positions the chair at the reticle, assuming the reticle is visible. If we visit the page on a suitable mobile device and choose the camera AR button, move the device around until the reticle is visible, then click the screen, you can see the chair in your room. There are six different chairs to view, but don't try sitting on them, they're not really there. You could use the controller gestures class to allow a user to rotate the chair in the Y axis, but I'll leave that as a challenge for you. XR lends itself to use in games, and in the next section we'll look at some important techniques common to many games. See you in the dungeon!